So, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak at this conference. Uh, my name is Philip. I am a student of the Faculty of Philosophy of Moscow State University. Therefore, I'm more responsible for the philosophical and methodological side of our research. So please excuse me in advance for possible technical inheritances. Uh, but my co-authors, David Dubrovsky and Alberti Ifimov, are engaged in methodological problems of neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and the philosophy of science. David Dubrovsky is the head of the uh, Russian Academy of Science Council uh, on the methodology of artificial intelligence, and Albert Ifimov is also a relatives developer and vice president for innovation and development at Sberbank. Uh, today, so today I'll talk about um, our research, part of which is reflected in our article. In order not to tell, just to tell the article, I'll try to display the general prerequisites as well as the main uh, conceptual moves um, of our research. Uh, so nowadays we can say that there is a complete consensus in the complex of an, an inherently transdisciplinary field of AI research today. Uh, even the term artificial intelligence itself is rather, is rather, uh, rather um, a suitcase word in which every researcher puts in his own meaning. Nevertheless, we believe that um, in the fields of AI methodology, we can identify some common essential features that determines that determine its uh, development and uh, if not exhaustive of the entire field, then at least covering most of it. Our paper is devoted to the study of uh, these features, um, explication uh, of its problems and suggestion of possible solutions. We can, this is the main uh, statement uh, of our work can be formulated as follows. So first we proceed from uh, the specifics of theory and conceptualization of intelligence machines, which became the theoretical basis for the paradigm of functionalism in AI research, as well as the consequences that such conceptualization has. So namely the, uh, uh, the e e equivalence of thinking and computing, which makes it possible to determine th thinking using purely symbolic um, testing. It has a setting a Turing wall between the judge and the test object. Uh, second, we uh, offer a description of AI research in terms of the development of various cognitive architectures defined by the research methodology. Cognitive architectures uh, used in creating intelligence robots can be classified using the concept of techno umwelt, um, uh, which includes a um, uh, cross section for, of the representation of reality perceived by the robot as well as a set of possible. Um, uh, uh, scenarios for interacting with it. And uh, third, we place uh, our research in a general epistemological framework that lies within the field of philosophy of science and describes uh, the methodological transition that occurs at the, the level of uh, approaching AI research and the creation of intelligent robots in terms of the transition between two types of uh, scientific rationality. So uh, we distinguish um, uh, 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 we distinguish non-classical and post-non-classical types of scientific rationality based on three criteria. Um, uh, by the um, and type of system organization of the object, by the type of research ideals and norms, and by the specific and uh, of the philosophical and methodological reflection uh, of a research. So we believe that uh, uh, the, the existing theory and methodology of AI research determines uh, they are developments in line with the known classical type of rationality, while the transition uh, uh, to the new post uh, Turing methodology will mean a transition to the post non classical type of rationality. And finally, um, uh, since the practical goal of our research is to clarify the grounds for the possibility of uh, creating a general AI, we focus on um, uh, the question why is uh, why the current methodological paradigm makes uh, it, 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 its creation, if not impossible, then at least uh, very uh, unlikely to justify. We need to move um, to a certain uh, post during methodology. And uh, as a possible alternative, we propose a methodology that belongs to a new type of scientific rationality, as I said which will allow us to formulate a fundamentally new model of cognitive architecture for intelligent robotics, uh, which uh, can accelerate uh, the creation of general AI. Um, therefore, uh, I'll try to briefly formulate your methodology and argue why we need uh, to develop uh, a new one. Uh, 
So the direction in the philosophy of EI, which was originally proposed by Turing and then developed by Putnam as the philosophy of consciousness is commonly called machine functionalism. And it's uh, the, the, par the paradigm of functionalism uh, was formed at the beginning of the second half of the 20th century as an, as an alternative to physicalism. And the basic difference is the principle of, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and, and, the basic, the basic, the basic difference is the principle of either functionalism of systems. Um, uh, uh, when, when it's when the same function can be reproduced on different material carrier, it has to with uh, different um, physical properties. The biological organism can be replaced with the technical physical one, and in in the function, uh, uh, if if the function in both processes remain unchanged, then uh, the results uh, the results uh, are indistinguishable, thus they are identical. And physicalism, which became a mainstream in the philosophy of science, was limited in the field of philosophy of consciousness and the AI, uh, requiring the, the reduction of all mental phenomena to the physical level. And uh, uh, functionalism made it possible to be physical and functional descriptions logically independent, considering uh, any conscious activity at a set of Turing machines that implements uh, their instructions, since other same action can be implement, implemented in systems uh, that differ in their physically uh, properties, uh, then mental states are not only physical but also functional relations. Therefore, it's possible to transfer human intelligence and consciousness uh, to a silicon base. So that's the uh, that proposed for solving uh, the EI problem uh, can be described as a, ver a ver verbal symboling behaviorism, verbal that is uh, including any verbal interaction um, uh, and uh, behaviorism because it's uh, that is uh, imitating capping the human behavior. So Turing himself believed that the new formulation uh, of our problem has the advantage of making a clear distinction between the physical and the mental capabilities of a person. Obviously, a necess necessary condition for such approaches uh, conducting an experiment should be uh, a wall which is formulated uh, as a condition that requires not to see other other participants in the game not to hear their voices and not to physically touch them um, so that, that is uh, the necessity uh, necessity of such a condition is dictated by two views on thinking and intelligence described above so avoiding physicalist reduction and problem of consciousness, he performs a logical reduction and intelligence is a symbolic operations that can be performed using a finite automaton. Of course, Alan Turing didn't believe that the neural structure of a human brain, of the human brain is designed like a digital computer. Um, he, he just was skeptical about creating robots with sensory devices similar to humans. Turing tried to bypass all these uh, questions in order to highlight the uh, exclusively intellectual component of human activity. Uh, so um, um, the Turing wall performs uh, the following functions. Uh, it uh, separates uh, the subject of the test, uh, the judge and the test object, uh, a computer or an, a human. It allows researchers to ignore all possible technical models uh, of human-robot interaction except one uh, virtual verbal um, umbel, it deduces difficult uh, questions from the field of Turing methodology, such as presence of consciousness and nonverbal communication, and uh, contrast uh, the activity of a computer and a human in their comparison. So the Turing wall is the core of Turing methodology, which makes it possible for a computer to outperform a human in a testable ability. And this can be a narrow activity, such as verbal communication, driving a car, or uh, on a special road or playing chess, but thus considering the work of AI researchers and developers boils down uh, to achieving a certain degree uh, of superiority uh, within a system in which the test subject can uh, the tester and the tester um, are separated by wall. Um, modern connectionists approach uh, to AI that use deep learning neural network uh, technologies use machine functionalism as a paradigm give us faster computers and more training samples, and we will increase the probability of current of correct prediction. And the connectionist approach based on simulating the neural connections of human brain began with the uh, work of uh, Neil and Simon formulated uh, the physical symbol system hypothesis 
hypothesis, hypothesis and based on this hypothesis, uh, the first cognitive architectures of AI were developed. Um, uh, from an epistemological point of view, such architectures denied the role of the robot's corporeal reality and cognition of the world and suggested solving many problems by increasing the number of representations and learning the connections between such uh, representations. Uh, so uh, the post-Turing methodology, uh, um, we give a detailed definition of Turing methodology in our paper and then show why it's necessary to modify this approach, uh, uh, so switch to a new methodology. Um, the successful uh, functioning of AGI research, we believe that um, as a scientific, as in scientific field, I mean, we believe that um, a common methodological paradigm is necessary for it because it uh, initially combines different disciplines that need to be coordinated. And uh, now we don't have the scientific paradigm that is necessary for AGI research to function effectively. We have just um, a lot of different approaches. Uh, because the methodology uh, that created Turing is already inefficient. Um, so our central thesis is uh, as follows. Uh, the Turing wall is non-classical methodological paradigm which slows down the creation of general AI, imposing epistemological, ontological, and even purely practical uh, restrictions uh, on AGI research. And these limitations in which uh, the inefficiency of uh, the Turing paradigm manifests itself are as follows. Turing well, uh, is an epistemological filter, verbal virtual, that allows you ignore any uh, the, the problem of consciousness uh, and other important problems uh, that can be permanently postponed. Uh, Turing um, was well, well creates um, the methodological limitation of focus, uh, focused man versus uh, robot, which is inefficient uh, because uh, the, it's experimentally proven, I, I, I think. And um, more efficient is focus uh, man versus man plus uh, robot. And the Turing uh, well postulates an ontological filter, uh, ideal real, uh, which incorrectly reflects the reality of total digitalization and algorithmization of you know, human, uh, nowadays human life. Thus, uh, the Turing wall is a non classical methodological paradigm, it has accumulated too many anomalies. and is simply not able to process already existing trends in AI research. And it's impossible to create, um, if it's impossible to create uh, AGI, then um, it's impossible to create um, uh, a new uh, methodology before it's necessary to shift uh, the, this epistemological focus and destroy the Turing wall. Uh, so um, for the transition, uh, from post-Turing based uh, to post-Turing based methodology, uh, we propose an approach based on uh, changes in the cognitive architectures used uh, to create intelligent robots. Uh, to describe these uh, changes, we introduce the concept of techno umbels. As I said above, this term means the slice of reality that is uh, accessible to the robot's perception and with, in, with which uh, it um, can interact. Such slices are categorized into two uh, subspaces according uh, to our uh, to four criteria verbal virtual verbal physical non verbal uh, virtual and non verbal uh, physical and in accordance with this categorization various urine tests are classified each uh, of which belongs to a particular subspace uh, it has stumbled uh, for example uh, the original turing test refers to the verbal uh, virtual umbelt and uh, but all uh, sorts of modifications involved in robotics uh, for example some Brooks tests um, refers um, referred to the uh, verbal and nonverbal physical umbold. Uh, so uh, uh, some features and uh, consequences on the transition of the Turing methodology are as follows. Um, um, how uh, AI is def def defined in the Turing methodology? Uh, if you follow the classification of Russell and Nordwig, uh, which they offer in the textbook of, on AI. Uh, uh, then this is a human-based and behavior-based uh, system. Uh, that is a system that can uh, can act in the same way as humans. And uh, how is general AI often uh, often defined? This is a software and hardware complex that can that has the ability to learn and act better than a human specialist in any field, achieving its goals. Uh, in a wide uh, range of, of environments with, with limited available resources. 
so um, uh, we, we we think that um, uh, within the framework of the Turing definition, it's possible to create systems aimed uh, to narrow applications, but creating an AGI in such a methodology will not work, and we show why in our uh, research. But then, uh, uh, how we will general we will uh, define um, general AI um, in a posturing methodology? Um, uh, it's the ability of a technical system to learn and act collaboratively with the human or autonomously uh, in any field accessible to a human, but better than a specialist in this field, achieving its goals uh, in all uh, four techno umbrals in condition of limited resources consumed by the technical system. So, um, what tasks can uh, this approach solve in the future? In the future? Uh, what uh, is the effectiveness of such a transition? We believe that uh, it will help solve the current challenges in general AI research. That's the solution of the moral of paradox, solving the problem of consciousness and sociality, uh, solving the problems of AI ethics, um, and, and so on. Finally, the main argument is the specific possibility of creating general AI. As verification, we, can, uh, we are going to uh, conduct an experiment with that will demonstrate the effectiveness of our approach and it will consist in designing a Turing like tests uh, that will evaluate the probability of uh, passing the Turing uh, test when an additional techno umwelt is um, included in the human robot communication interaction uh, of uh, um, interaction umwelt. Of course, um, we are going to conduct the probability theoretic evaluations and um, represent the results. The experiment uh, will use the technology uh, called Iliana uh, during the creation of which researchers at Sperbank Robotics Laboratory made an agent capable to perf of performing uh, simultaneous actions in two techno um, uh, verbal, virtual, and non-verbal physical. It's a telecommunicator. Uh, so we don't have time, I think, to uh, watch it. There is no sound. Ah, so, so uh, he, he, <laughs> I think you believe me that uh, it, it, it was. Uh, and so thank you. Thank you much for your attention, um, for the opportunity. Uh, if you have a question, you may ask. Any questions, please? Uh, I, I have a question. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, what 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 if um, you try to 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 say to this system on the other side something like uh, go in that direction and then you point with your hand how uh, your test is going to to be able to to uh, understand that I am pointing to something and then you need to go in the direction that follows in, in this direction that I am pointing. Uh, uh, how uh, the test? You, you mean our empirical test, or, or what? The, that this test that you are proposing that uh, is going to to substitute the, the the old Turing test that is based only on symbolic communication, and then you are trying to extend it to a, a, a greater test that uh, using some uh, virtuality and 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 those things. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we are going to. Um, uh, uh, divide uh, uh, people into two groups. Uh, so one group will communicate uh, with a chatbot and uh, a human, uh, like in uh, originally Turing test. And second group will uh, communicate with chatbot uh, by uh, by the media of uh, uh, our telecommunicator. So. Uh, we are going to um, find out is um, uh, the, um, uh, if we plus one techno umbo to other, uh, to our usually, to uh, originally Turing test, will uh, the um, um, probability of uh, um, uh, uh, I think the probability. My, 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 my uh, point is that maybe uh, it's not enough to have symbolic communication. You need to have some kind of visual 
uh, information flowing from one, from one side to the other side, such that the agent on the other side can see my, uh, my, my, uh, um, the camera showing uh, me pointing to one direction. And, and this should require a different kind of, of intelligence than just uh, uh, simply uh, natural language processing or something like that. Uh, okay, um, I, 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 I can get it. So uh, my English is very bad. So uh, can you please uh, uh, maybe write uh, it on the email? And... Ricardo, I guess Alan Schulz has built such systems in Naval Research Laboratory. Okay, very good. I'm, I'm just uh, talking about the test because if you want to test, you need to test things like that. I, I think it's... Uh important to to, to yes. thank, thank you very much sorry uh, that I, I can't answer but uh, uh, I really like to so if you uh, if you if you uh, write me on the email and uh, uh, I'll find out uh, okay okay I'll do that okay Sam please thank go you very much uh, just interested in the when I first saw your diagram of walking through the wall, it appeared what you were arguing for was a kind of augmented intelligence test where the human plus uh, an AI were being evaluated, not against just a human. And I find that interesting. Could you measure the effectiveness of a team, a human and AGI team, and then compare that to just a human team? That might be an interesting way of measurement. Oh, uh, it's. Uh, I think it's interesting. It's. It's not in our in in, in this paper mm. that uh, will be in proceedings. But in our research, we uh, deal with it. And in in the dissertation of uh, uh, my scientific uh, uh, senior, it, uh, uh, he um, he speaks about that. And uh, I, I I thought uh, there is a, uh, a little a few um, uh, empirical empirical um, information about uh, uh, the effectiveness of collaborating between human and uh, uh, human and the AI. And I will uh, send you, uh, if you are interested in it, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the source. Please, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, Philip. Sam, would you like to take over and continue with your panel? Ah, okay. 